We start in the DPRK. The country has testified a new type of long-range cruise missile over the weekend. The state news agency KCNA says the launches were successful. Senior officials observed the event. The report also says the new weapon holds strategic significance, giving the country another effective means of deterrence against hostile forces. The launches came just days after a military parade in Pyongyang to mark the country's 73rd founding anniversary. The U.S. military says the test pose a threat to the country's neighbors and beyond. Jack Barton has more details from Seoul. Normally we get information on these types of launches either from the U.S. officials or from the South Korean government, the Joint Chiefs of Staff. This time the first we're hearing about it is from DPRK Central News Agency. What they're saying is there were multiple tests of these long-range cruise missiles over the weekend. Uh, they flew for a total of 7,580 seconds. And my maths might be wrong, but I think that's a little short of an hour and a half. Uh, with a total range of 1,500 kilometers. And while they were heading towards their targets, which according to the Central News Agency they hit accurately, uh, they were flying ovals, figure of eights, uh, patents to prove that they were true cruise missiles and that they could deviate uh, from their course while heading to their target, which of course makes them much harder to intercept, uh, but it also means they can fly very low to the ground, going uh, below hill peaks, making them very hard to detect as well. Nonetheless, South Korean media here calling it a low-level provocation so far because they don't contravene UN security uh, sanctions targeting the DPRK. Unlike ballistic missiles, which utilize a rocket engine, these are low-flying missiles, as I just described, which use a jet engine. Uh, so the UN uh, doesn't ban these, uh, or the testing or the use of these missiles by the DPRK. However, this is the first time they're flying long-range missiles that can carry a bigger payload. Perhaps it won't be worrying Washington too much, but the fact that these missiles can easily reach Japan or South Korea and could potentially carry miniaturized nuclear warheads, something that Pyongyang has stated it is seeking to do, will definitely be ringing alarm bells here. They're trying to send a message that it will not be marginalized and that uh, they won't be, uh, you know, something. Uh, I, I would imagine that they want the, the talks to restart. Now, keep in mind, this uh, gives them a full uh, set of uh, nuclear options. They have a submarine-launched missile. They have a ballistic missile, which they say can reach the United States. And now a cruise missile, which puts, um, if it was 1,500 kilometers, it puts both Beijing and Tokyo uh, within its particular range. The state media suggests that Pyongyang spent the last two years developing these long-range missiles. That means it, it would have started around the time that Donald Trump was meeting Kim Jong-un at the DMZ or, or shortly after. What does that tell you about what was happening back then? Well, it, it makes it clear that, that that was more theater than reality and that uh, jumping back and forth across the line it would, was no substitute for, um, you know, having a real strategic um, objective and ability to achieve it between the U.S. and DPRK. Uh, obviously, Young Kim did not believe that anything was uh, substantive was going to happen in those talks. Otherwise, he would have put those on hold.